Hey, hey, everybody, welcome to Live at Five. That's right, the Clay Share live broadcast that happens every Wednesday at 5 p.m. And we are excited for this week because it's a really fun night of tutorials planned for you. First, we're gonna be making some simple footed bowls. Now, I made this one during Clay Share Con, I wanna say three, maybe four years ago, using the Garrity Mushroom Anvils. If you don't know about these, you need to check them out. You can go back and watch any of the past four years of ClayShareCon for free on ClayShare. So just go to ClayShare.com and you can find ClayShareCon all listed there every year that we've done it. This year we're doing it again. It'll be our fifth year and it's coming up the 21st of February through the 24th of February. Again, it is free. It will all be recorded and you can watch the replays over and over forever. So you don't have to register. You don't have to buy a ticket. You don't have to do anything. You just show up and watch and have fun. So these guys right here were part of Clay ClayShareCon. Garrity joined us for a few years. I don't know if they're going to be joining us this year. I don't have them on the schedule and I have a very full schedule already planned out. I might be able to squish a couple people in if I need to, but um, so far I don't have Garrity on there. So Garrity, if you guys wanna get in on this year's Clay Share Con, um, you know, reach out to me. But just to let you know, we have got Amico, Mako, we have Speedball, we have, uh, Amico's also Brent, Brent Wheels. We have Clayscapes, we have GR Pottery Forms, we have Daylaw Designs. We have Diamond Core Tools. We have Michael Harbridge. We have Paula McCoy. We have so many people lined up for this year's Clay Share Con. The schedule will be coming out, and uh, I oh, Strong Arms going to be joining us. Uh, Ceramapix is joining us. Fired on Decals is joining us. Kathy Skaggs is going to be doing some demos with us. So there's a lot happening, and um, I'm really excited for this year. So. This little guy we made together. So it's just a cute little sauce bowl. You can make them bigger though. I believe Garrity makes bigger anvils. This size here, let me check. I got my little handy dandy GR Pottery Form travel tape measure. <laughs> so I can go ahead and quickly measure this and see what the diameter is. This is a little one. This is only four inches. I believe they make a five inch and I'll use this tonight. We'll do, we'll do something with this. So we'll make something like this. Well, it'll be a little different, but it'll be similar. Um, and then uh, here's one I made with little tall legs. So we're gonna make one of these right here as well. So I'll give you a couple options and we'll talk about making simple dishes and bowl forms and as a great way to start making them and how you can scale them up. I have a ton of classes on making your own forms. Now I love GR Pottery Forms and I have quite a few and I use them all the time. I also use my own forms and I use Michael Harbridge's forms too. So he makes these puzzle molds that you put together to make spheres, but the this, this sphere forms, when you just use half of it, make a great mold. So you've got tons of options out there. You can also buy the floral foam spheres. You can get them cut in half or whole. You can get regular styrofoam ones. You can use plastic bowls. So as far as forms go, there are options, like as many options as you could possibly imagine exist. So you don't have to buy a form if you don't want to. It's really nice to have those options, but you can also make them. I have this great big huge mold form that I made from a wok. It's called the wok bowl mold. And so I teach you how to make a mold from a wok. Guess what? You can make a wok bowl mold any size because you can get woks up to 30 inches. You're just limited to how big your kiln is, right? So I have a 24 inch wok that I made a mold from and my kiln is 28 inches across, so I know everything that I make with that is gonna fit in there. But you can use any size wok to make a mold. You can buy woks really inexpensively at flea markets. You can also buy them at kitchen supply stores. And if you do use it in the studio, don't use it in the house is my recommendation, so. All right, so you tried to order the anvil, but they're always out of stock. You have a wooden rounder ordered from Mug Plug. M yes, um, let me. Let me see, uh, Kev, I don't know if you can grab my mug plugs uh, wooden anvil that I have. It's behind my Tucker clay on the shelf next to, on the bottom shelf next to the uh, templates right there. Yeah, you got it. He got it. So he can grab it for me. This one is great 
It's from, oh, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. The magic hand comes reaching in from the side. So this one right here is from Mugplug. The folks that bring us these amazing things right here, right? These are awesome. Now, is that in the camera? <laughs> I might have to move it because I stand it up in your way so you can't see. We'll put it there. Um, the difference being is the shape of this is a little deeper shape, but it will work, right? So you can make deeper bowls. The mushroom anvil is a little shallower. You can also get darning mushrooms, and I have a couple of those, just generic wooden ones. Let's go to camera two so you can see in detail. So a darning mushroom is just smaller than this. You can also use, let me see if I've got the, uh, yeah. You could, I mean, you got darning eggs too, but the darning egg is really made for doing a small pressed dish, but a little teeny tiny sauce dish or you can use it sideways and press it. So forms are everywhere. You can make your own, you can buy them. I mean, you, look, here's a bowl form I made. Not so different, right? And I made this one about 20 years ago. I've been trucking this around forever. It actually has a hairline crack in it. You cannot tell, it still works. Until it breaks apart, I'm gonna keep using it. Uh, this one too, I made around the same time. And depending on how you make them, you can use the inside as a mold as well as the outside. So you can do what's called a drape mold or you can do a slump mold on the interior. So you have a small darning mushroom and the eggs. They're really helpful, aren't they? Yeah, I find them very helpful. This mug, this, uh, mug plug black squirrel pottery, which is now black squirrel creations, is a great rounder. Yeah, that's what, what it's for. But we can make a plate with it. We can make lots of things with it. Um, one thing I do like about this is it just, it stands up on its end, see? So that if you're putting it somewhere on a shelf, as long as your shelf's not wobbly, it's gonna stay there. Um, or, you know, and you can twirl it around, make a little game up, you know, what am I gonna make today? Have everything written out on a piece of paper and spin it and wherever it lands, that's what you're making that day in the studio. Spin the mug plug? No. Anyhow. Well, let's make some pots. Because I know you want to. <laughs> I've got a slab of clay. Uh, this is just white smooth clay. It's Tucker's Smooth Stone, which is a cone 5-6 clay. And it, Tucker's is out of Canada, but you could use any clay. You could use B-Mix. You can use whatever you want. I just happen to have one, two, three, four, five boxes of this sitting back there, and I want to use it up because, you know, as soon as I use this up, I can get more clay of a different kind or more of this. I don't know. Uh, so I rolled this out of my slab roller, which is set to three-eighths of an inch, and I always roll my slabs out thicker than I need because that means I can thin them down for small things like we're doing tonight or leave them thick for big platters and stuff. So... If it's too thin, I can only use it for small things. So although it seems too thick to begin with, it's not. And if you don't have a slab roller, no worries. You can easily roll out your own slab by hand. All you need is a wooden rolling pin and a couple of thickness strips or little strips of wood to determine the thickness. Or you can roll it freehand like I often do. And I have a tutorial teaching you all how to roll slabs out by hand. So you can check that out. So you made a couple bowl molds to make and fire magnolias in. Yes. They're very handy because you can take this one right here because it's been bisque fired. That's all it is, is a bisque mold. This right here. Uh, I can put this back in the kiln if I needed to have something nested inside it to support it for firing. This one was wheel thrown. I have a hand building version too. So if you're a hand builder, I teach you how to make a mold like this. We actually have a class coming up that you're gonna need a form on coming up in February. And I'm gonna teach you how to make the form. It's very similar to one of these, except it's much more rounded. And, uh, and then once you make the form, you'll be able to make the object. And I'm not gonna tell you what it is till February. You gotta wait. I know, how can I keep a secret? It's very difficult. All right, so we smoothed out both sides. And you can see it's still pretty thick, thicker than we really want it to be, but we have a lot of clay here, and we'll be able to thin it down and make a lot of things. So let's start with this Garrity 
mushroom right here. And what I like about that is we can take a cookie cutter and we can just quickly cut out shapes that we can then press into clay with the cookie cut, with the mushroom. So this one here is five inches. I try to write on my cookie cutters the size because I never remember. If it's not written there, I have to go measure again. Now, if you want texture on here, you can. This little guy has the Southwest texture. My daughter clays this, so if you all like this glaze, it's, I believe, Fog and Glacier Celadon from Amico. But we can all applaud her on her glazing efforts for this piece here. I think she did really well. She glazed it like three years ago now, but still, I still think it's great. So let's go ahead and make, I'm just grabbing some rollers for texture. I'm gonna leave it a bit thick. Maybe that's a little thicker than I want. Let me smooth it with a little more. I just want this section will go right up here. So this is our circle we're gonna be cutting. I'm gonna roll my texture through it. Rolling of the texture will thin it down. Do you see how much that stretched? See how far that, look at this. We have our, our line, do, 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 and then bloop. That's, you know, from stretching. You can roll another strip if you want to have texture cover the entire area. And then always release. So this is a really simple project that if you're just starting out or you just want something fun to do in the studio, this is a great one. All right, so you get your little circle cut out, five inch circle. And then I have this piece of foam. This is actually a memory foam pillow that I have right here, believe it or not. Um, if you take a, <laughs> you might not want to go buy a memory foam pillow and then chop it in half and use it for studio stuff, but um, I did. So thanks mom for the memory foam pillow a few years ago. Uh, I didn't like sleeping on it, but I sure like it in the studio. Don't tell, I hope mom's not watching. I'll feel bad. <laughs> so we've got our texture in our clay and we got our little anvil and we can just press this down um, into the foam. And this clay I rolled out this afternoon, just, I don't know, about three o'clock maybe. And I just let it sit out. You can see it's uh, still a bit floppy, but not, not too floppy, but it's not sticky sticky. Way to go Riley, right? Yeah, she did a great job with it. All right, and then you just press down. Now keep in mind, the pressing down will lessen your texture if you press too hard. Um, I don't think the, the texture doesn't go away. You know, here's this one, it has texture still, but it will be much more subtler. All right, get it approximately centered and just press. Just like that, a little whirl around and you can pop it over. Now, I like to flip it upside down so that I can go ahead and put feet on it. You don't need feet. You can go ahead and just take another board and press on it and flatten an area. Here, let me... We'll use a GR pottery form to improvise. So you can just take something flat, press down, and make a little flattened area. This area right here is now flat. But who doesn't want cute feet on their little, on their little dishes they're making, right? So when I'm making these, I'll have a cylinder or something nearby or a mug. Just pop it in. This, one, this one's got a really high handle. Look at that. So maybe a cup. I got a cup? Oh, I happen to have a cup. All right, we'll switch it out. Cup. There you go. Now, some scrap clay, which we always got little bits of scrap clay. Go ahead and roll that up. And then we're going to roll that out into a coil. Then we're going to take this coil and I'm gonna cut it into four pieces. So cut it in half and in half again, and you want them to be about the same size. Those two are close. That one's a little big. We're gonna make little balls for the feet. Uh, 
<laughs> don't tell my mom. Tell her it was her ex an extra one, yes. This is the other one. And so when she, if she is up at the house and is like, hey, whatever happened to the uh, <laughs> memory foam pillow? No, she's never asked, thank goodness. So this mushroom is a four inch mushroom. It's a little one and here it is finished. So it makes a small sauce dish. It's not a, it's not a big one, All right? Four, four balls of clay for the feet. Can you do three? You can. Is a three or four more stable? Well, as long as you make it level, it's all good either way. It's entirely up to you. Uh, a tripod will be more forgiving because as you know, the three legs, one can be a little shorter or longer and it won't wobble, but you know, we're gonna do this so that it, this will not wobble, so I'm not worried about it. So I'm slipping and scoring the little ball and where the ball touches the clay. Now you can leave these little balls if you like the little ball shape. It's entirely up to you. You know, you can work it a little bit. Working the base of the little foot down I have a great sprig mold I made from an acorn and it's the bottom of the acorn with the cap off and I use that a lot for little feet so the foot is actually a little acorn from the tree outside so it's a little Vermont acorn foot it's very very cute and so for cleaning up your edges I'm just going to take a brush this is just going to be a one quarter inch synthetic bristle brush that I have right here that I got at the craft store. Nothing fancy. And then we're just going to smooth out all the way around, clean up that slip. Now, if you want to press into it like I did here, do you see how I shaped them into little like diamond forms? You just pinch like this. Just take, just do this in the overhead. Just do this. And as I'm pinching it, I'm also pressing down a bit. A little lopsided. My feet need to come this way. All right, let's rip it off. Hold on. It's like ripping off a Band-Aid. Ooh, it took some clay with it. You see that? That's, you see how well I attached that foot? That was really on there. But it's not centered. All right, so the inside's gonna have a little boo-boo I'll have to fix later from my joining. So it happens when you join your clay foot too well onto your pot. All right, now this one, gently, come and let go. Maybe we can just walk it over. There we go. Now normally I would let this sit on the anvil for a little while Let's go ahead and check our level. So you just set something flat on it and you tap, tap, tap. And do you see how it flattened the feet? And then we'll flip it over. I've got a board somewhere. I just had a board. Oh, there it is. Remember folks, it's just clay. So if something messes up, just, just either try to fix it. If it doesn't work, make another. You're all for three feet. You're so bad at centering. And that's part of it, right? So this is still soft enough that I can actually come in and adjust my little dish if I want to. So there's the little round one. Isn't it a cute little, look at it. Here, if you look at from the side, see how cute it is. And then as far as the rim goes, um, you know, if you use a sheet of plastic with your cookie cutter, you could cut it and then you wouldn't have uh, the sharper edges or you could smooth it out before you made the bowl or you go back like I usually do and just soften the edges. I just get my finger damp or I just use my damp sponge or wait till it's completely leather hard, hard and do the taco sponge right there. So this will just sit and dry and that's it. We made the cute little sauce dish right off the bat. That was pretty easy, right? I don't mind the lines. No, you see the lines where, because they're even, the main part of the pattern, and then we have two little strips, so it's intentional. Even if it isn't, I don't mind it. Now, because this is a little roller, 
you are going to have lines, although I do have the Butterfly Garden have a 12 inch and I have a 7. So if I'm making anything bigger and I really didn't like that line, I could go with a bigger roller. But um, I don't have hang ups about lines like I know there it's everybody has their own things and believe me, there's things that make me crazy, but that's not one of them. All right, so let's make one like this right here. This little cutie with these tall legs on it. Let's make one of those. So this one I made a heart shape. So if you want to do a heart shape, you can. You don't have to. You could do a circle. You could do a rectangle. You could do a spherical square. So it's entirely up to you. As for the heart shape, I mean, you can use a heart cookie cutter. You can save a box of chocolates. You know somebody's given you a box of chocolates this, ha this Valentine's, right? I mean, somebody's gonna. And if somebody doesn't, you should just buy your own. I'm all for buying my own chocolate if nobody gives me any. So if you want to make a heart shape and you're looking for a template and you don't want to draw your own, you can use your chocolate box. GR Pottery Forms has a bunch of great heart shape forms. You can make heart dishes and we've done a lot with these in the past. But what I really like about them is they're great templates if you want to get a heart shape and you want to get bigger. So right here, look, we can make a heart this big and you can make a dish from a giant heart. Let's go with this one right here. And in the set that Jeff does, this is the cutie. So this is the small heart in the set. I don't know how, what the, I don't know if he measures top to bottom or side to side. I'm not sure how to get the dimension for that, uh, that one there. All right, so let's grab another chunk of clay off my slab. So usually when I roll out my slab of clay, I'll just keep going back to that same slab and grabbing what I need for clay. You buy your own chocolate, even if you get chocolate. Woohoo! I know, live at five, right? You guys, you know, we talked about this, about the Live at Five and how that used to be what it was called for years and years. And then we switched to just Clay Share Live, um, but we brought it back, Live at Five. And I know it might not be five o'clock where you are, but guess what? It's five o'clock somewhere. And it's certainly five o'clock here, so we're going with it. All right, so here's that slab of clay smoothed out. And I wanted to share some other fun texture things uh, with you all. So let's see, do we have enough clay? We're gonna smooth it a little more. So when we smooth out the clay, we are um, compressing it, which is nice, helps prevent warping, but we're also stretching it a little bit. So if your clay is just a tiny, tiny bit too small, this will get you the extra little bit you need to get there. So yeah, we got enough. And I'm gonna do a registration mark with my fingers because I'm gonna use a texture and I wanna put it in a specific spot. All right, so I got the little conversation hearts and I'm just gonna roll this through once. Although you can do uh, top and bottom. You could go down here and do another bit and a bit up there, but I'm just gonna do one stripe across the middle like that. And then I'm gonna smooth away any of those lines that I left from my finger just to make sure they don't show. And then all we're doing is using this GR Pottery form as a template. We're not using it to make anything, although you can. There's not a rule out there saying you cannot, but I have these in the studio. I use everything that I have. So if I need a heart shape, and I do have a chocolate box, but it's bigger. So if I need a heart that's this size to make a template, I'm just gonna grab the GR Pottery form and use it. The same thing with circles. If I need a six and a half inch circle, this is what I go for because I have the GR Pottery form for it. If I lay this on clay and just cut this circle out, if I need a giant circle of clay, and I did this the other day, I actually use these boards and I have my bats from my wheel that I will use as a template to cut out 
a shape. If I need a big circle cut out for something, I will just use those. I've got anything. If it, if it doesn't run away from me, I will try to use it as a template. All right, so I'm just going ahead and cleaning up my edges now. And we're gonna take and use the smaller of the little wheel thrown molds. So if you're gonna make these, I would just sit down and start with like a pound of clay, then a pound and a half, then two pounds, and make some taller, make some wider, you know, make from two pounds of clay, you can make so many different shapes. So play with it for a bit, make a bunch of them because they're super handy. All right, now the great thing about this is we just, we're just gonna drape it on and press. And if you think one side's too far one way, you just grab the clay and you scooch it. And I'm just using my hands to kind of gently roll it down. You bought the heart cutters from Debbie. That is great. I didn't, I, I don't have hers, but if I did, I'd be using them. So yeah, use what you have. I do have these from Debbie and I think I'm gonna use one of these in a minute. Uh, these are her cutters that I think are for the Wallies. All right, so we've gone ahead and I've kind of pressed it down, but I really want it to conform. So I'm going to take my red rib here and I'm just gonna smooth, and you can smooth up, you can smooth down. I actually, sometimes you'll use a sponge. I have a small paint roller, which I will use too to roll down the side. You could use a pony roller, which is just a little mini wooden roller. You could use another textured roller. I mean, you could roll the texture again from the outside if you want. But what we're trying to do is really get the memory of this wonderful mold into the clay. We want to impart the shape on the clay. Another one of the sponges I've been using a lot lately, and I didn't know if I would like it, is the purple sponge from Diamond Core Tools. And I got these back when, when they first came out. Was that October? Does anybody remember? I can't remember exactly when they came out, but um, these are very smooth. The purple one is very nice. I've been using it on groggy clay. I've been using it on porcelain. And then I started using it on dark clay, so now it can't go back to porcelain because it's been tainted with the dark, the dark clay. So I have to buy another one is basically where I'm at. Although I do have a couple of the white mud tool sponges which work really well, but this doesn't pull up any grog. All right, so we've got our bowl shape made, but it has to sit for a little while. So we're gonna make some funny legs for it. We're gonna make these goofy legs. And anybody out there? Uh, I'm gonna tell you what I was inspired by to make these legs. Actually, this whole dish inspired me. Um, one thing inspired me. <laughs> I'm gonna give somebody a, a hint and you'll see if anybody gets what, it's a creature. And I'm gonna tell you snoots and boots. Snoots and boots, who knows what that is? Uh, we'll, and we'll start making the feet for that if someone can get the snoots and boots. Entomologists. <laughs> I could see we're elephants, but not quite. Uh, uh, yeah, this sponge doesn't pull up grog, the purple one. The yellow ones do. These are terrible uh, for grog, but this one's great. The alien legs, they can be anything you want. Aren't they so fun? I mean, look at them. Tall, skinny legs. Um, so I, they're uh, weevils. You know, a weevil is a bug and they're identified by their snoots and boots. So they have these really long snouts and their feet look like they're wearing boots. So it's like Horton legs. They do look like elephant legs. So we can call it elephant and look at the top of this heart. It sort of looks like elephanty. So if you didn't put, you guys, I mean, if we didn't do the conversation heart pattern in here and you painted eyes in here and painted in the trunk, you could paint an elephant face in here. 
It's basically an elephant. I almost, when I first made this one, I was like, oh, I should do another one and not put the hearts in there and we'll make it an elephant. Like, weevils, exactly, snoots and boots. All right, so to make legs, we're just gonna roll out coils or if you have an extruder, you can extrude them. <laughs> can I demonstrate how to use the mug plug rounder? Uh, yeah, uh, I don't think we'll do that today, but really, it's very simple. When you hand build something, uh, like this cup was hand built, when it's leather hard, you put it in and you press the clay up against it so that it keeps its nice round shape. Exactly like I use a terracotta pot, except you can use this. So I have a whole stack of, that was my tool, my tool cup. I have a whole stack of terracotta pots I use as rounders, but these are nice too. So you have options, plus you get a lot more of a range with this. But we'll make, we'll make something, we'll get to that in a minute. We'll get there. We got, got lots to do though. All right, so let's roll out our coil. And you wanna keep it a little thick because you need it to hold up your bowl, but you don't want them too thick. You know, see me make an elephant. We're not gonna do an elephant tonight. I don't have everything prepped up for it, but um, I do plan to do animal bowls as a class or they could be plates. So stay tuned for that. I've got a bunch of animal things. Um, actually, that's a challenge coming up this summer on ClayShare. So uh, I'm giving you a little heads up, folks. All right, let's make three legs. How long do you want your legs? I mean, we want some long legs on here, right? I don't know how long this is. Uh, I'm just gonna take it and lay it up against the side and the first one I cut is my measurer. So ideally they'll all be the same length, but guess what? We're gonna use three. So if one of them was too long, oh well, it'll be fine. Nobody will know. All right, so we wanna make the foot part. So I'm gonna, just like we make stamps, you know how we tamp, tamp, tamp to widen the base? We're gonna tamp, tamp, tamp it a bit, just a few times, tamp, tamp, tamp. And then I'm gonna drag my finger down it, sculpting a bit, and dragging some clay down, making it a little wider at the base. This is a really nice technique if you wanna make a handle too, because this is where it would join on one end so you can use your fingers. I'm telling all my secrets, not everything. I'm not telling everything, but a lot, yeah. I know, you all know I'm terrible at keeping secrets. I have a problem with it. <laughs> can you believe I was military intelligence and had a top secret clearance? Whew. But you know what, I've kept those secrets and still do. So, I mean, some things I can keep secret. All right, look, now it'll hold itself up. That's what we want. Perfect, All right? So we gotta make, we gotta make two more. Animal dishes. Uh, I've got a whole, a whole slew of classes coming this summer. That's animals. But we can't, we can't do, we can't talk about summer classes when it's snowing and 11 degrees outside. So we have to wait. February's coming, we have a great challenge. It's not animals, but February and March, we're doing something to toot your horn about. <laughs> Kevin's laughing at my bad puns. Do y'all know potters are punny? Uh, when I was a student, my professor, uh, I, I have always made puns and he's like, you're meant to be a potter. And I was like, I was like, what? He's like, yeah, potters are punny. <laughs> I was like, well, I didn't know that. It's because we're dorky with our senses of humor, but hey. All right, so here's our next one. We're, we're, we're kind of making them about the same. Uh, kind of like uh, the walkers maybe in Star Wars. What were those walkers called uh, in the Star Wars movie? The mechanized ones, they, um, you know, they had those big feet. Does anybody remember? What were they called? I think they were just called walkers. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Snowing is the best time to talk about summer. I'm not at the point yet where I'm 
you know, I hit the point in February where I start pe playing um, Bob Marley and we start grilling again and I uh, like try to pretend summer's just a few weeks away when <laughs> it's so it's still four months away. But we're not there yet, not yet. We got a couple more weeks. I'm good. I'm loving winter. January is winter at its best. All right. So you make your little feet. If you get dry clay on your fingers, go ahead and wipe it clean and then keep smoothing because what happens is if you get clay built up on your fingers and then you try to sculpt, you're going to drag that dry clay across all the clay, uh, the wet clay, the soft clay, and then you're going to get lines and you're not going to get, look how beautifully smooth this is from just my fingers. And it's because my hands, I'm keeping them clean. <laughs> oh, your husband's grilling tonight because the sun came out. <laughs> All right, so now we have to check them because look, look at the height situation. So we've got one that's significantly shorter. I mean, I can pinch him and turn him a little bit and maybe get some height back. Maybe. And I think I probably will. I did. Look, it's almost the height the others are. Is that magic? What? You just turn and pinch, turn and pinch, turn and pinch. And all I'm doing is squeezing the clay and it's elongating it. So look, we almost got them all at the same height. Out. Oh, you saw how it was much, much shorter. All right, so for these, I'm just going to tamp them quickly and grab our bowl. So we're going to do three legs, just three, so that we don't have to worry about how wobbly or wibbly it is. It's going to be, it's going to be good. So this is going to be the front leg, but we can't put it on like this. If you put it on like this, you're making the front of a Dalek, right? Right here. That's not what we're going for. So we're going to bend things. So we're going to actually attach this, and once it's attached, we'll bend the front a bit down. I'm going to turn it this way. See how we bent it back a little bit? But we don't have to worry about that yet. We just want to get it on there. We'll bend it back after. So let's go ahead and slip and score. Put it where we think we want it. I, th I think right about there. And then we go ahead and you wiggle it in. And then you press down. And I'm just going to go ahead and just like we did with the little dish we made a few minutes ago, I'm just going to use the clay and smooth down the base of this leg. And then our little paintbrush that we've been using will clean up any slip that's squeezed out, and there's one foot on. The at-at from Star Wars. Yes, that's what it was, A-T-A-T, at-at. Thank you. When I was a kid, Star Wars was always on over the holidays. That was like the show you got to watch. And of course, you know, it was on all day, every day for all of Christmas break. So I got to see a lot of Star Wars. Not complaining, just stating. All right, slipping and scoring. And we'll do one more. So this technique I'm teaching you, it's a small bowl, which is where you want to start if you haven't made things like this before. But just by scaling up with a bigger slab, a bigger form, and bigger legs, you could make bigger bowls. So we're making a little bowl, but I always want to start you off with the smaller things and then you work your way up because once you see you can do it on a small one, you can do it on a big one. Why? Because you've already done it. You already did it here. You did it on the little one. Why can't you do it on the big one? There's no reason. It's just bigger. It's not harder, just larger. So little things can be very complex and take a lot of skill. And once you know those techniques, you use them and you scale it up so you can make a big one. And what you use for your former under this, well, it could be anything. I'm using a bowl I made. It could be a found object. It could be an object you purchased. 
doesn't matter. All right, so we're gonna smooth this out. And here's our little legs, but remember, let me get down here. They're angled right now. They're not gonna work. We need to straighten them. But I also wanna check with something flat. So I don't think, I don't know if camera, if the camera can get on, you guys can't see, and I can't really lift it up, but I can see when I look at the bottom of the form, I can see I need to turn this inward, and this one needs to turn inward, and then let's turn this towards me. And I actually work like this in the studio. I get down on my knees. I have a little, I'm a foot pad under me, like a little mat. All right, now we can shape it. And they are gonna be level. I'll bring it up to camera too, so you can see. Do you see now? See the little bows I put in to the legs? And it also gives it more movement and it creates this like liveliness to it and it almost makes it seem like it is alive. So this is why this would be great for a elephant or another animal piece because we've already got movement in the legs. We've got something happening. It's interesting. So these bowl forms are one, these I threw. These are some wheel thrown ones that I made um, about 20 years ago. I was talking about them earlier and one of, a couple of them have cracks. I have a whole stack of them. Oh, Kevin's sharing throwing a drape mold. Oh, those are different ones than these, but they're similar, right? And when you're gonna make these, if you don't want to throw or you don't throw, you can make them from coils. You can also make them like my walk bowl mold class where we drape over a bowl. I have a couple other um, mold classes. I have a lot. If you wanna make your own molds and supports, I've got a ton of classes because that's how I learned. Uh, all these great products that like Michael Harbridge has and JR Pottery Forms and other companies have, we didn't have 20 years ago. You either made it yourself. There wasn't the really, or you, or you didn't have one. All right, so this has to stay, sit for just a little while because the legs are soft. They just went on there. And if we go ahead and try to make it stand, it could collapse. So we're gonna let it set for just a minute. I'm gonna put my stamp inside it. Let's see, I'm gonna go this way. I'm gonna stamp it. We're gonna set this to the side and let's make something with, oh, I got a couple more things. So we've got, wait, we're right for time. Woo, we got about 15 minutes. What can we make? Little hearts on the feet, like two big toes. You could shape the feet into hearts before you put them on. I wouldn't do it now because it would be fiddly, but yeah. I think it's a great idea. Here's another foot leg. I have extra legs floating around in case something happens. But um, here, watch quickly. Make a heart. Pinch and then pinch here. Uh, we did in our jewelry making class, uh, this summer we always do bead week, which is basically a week's worth of handmade jewelry classes. And we did little beads that were heart beads. But this is basically, oh, it's a kitty face now. It's a, it's a cat face, oh my gosh. Okay, I'll be all right. Um, but you could go ahead and, I know I got so sidetracked by a cat face, um, sculpt basically a heart bead. Look at that, I'm using this to shape it. Let's give it a little more of a defined heart shape, less kitty cat face, not that we don't want kitty cat face, but Boop, boop, boop. So look, we've got a heart bottom. And you could sculpt up the piece and continue that heart shape. See this little indent I made? You can just pull that up. And you just sculpt it. So you're getting some sculpting techniques right now, really simple ones, but everything is just a whole bunch of simple steps put together to make complicated things. It's so adorable. Yeah, so like hearts in the toes. So from the front, you're gonna see little, little like toes. Cute, also I just made a great heart stamp, yay me. So I can press this into clay now and have a heart stamp once it dries and is bisque fired. 
So there, there is. Thanks, Bobby. I, I'll bring this to you next time I see you uh, in Syracuse. Maybe I'll bring it to Nsika. You're going to be there? Um, and Bobby has a little Yorkie. I see a little gizmo. And I love on all the pictures because my little girl, my little Yorkie, she's almost eight months. Um, and she runs the house, I tell you. OK, we're going to make another one. So we want to use this right here. Oh, wow. What do we have? I have a plan for this. So the deep one, we could try it with this. It wasn't my plan, but you know what they say about plans. So I'm going to grab my clay, and I actually just used the cutter. <laughs> I just used the cutter to cut out my, I know exactly how much I need because I used the cutter, but it's too thick. I want to thin it down, so I'm going to go ahead and thin it down. <laughs> it's bowl-legged. Oh, that's good. That's really good. <laughs> All right, so we're going to smooth this out. Although it's already been smoothed once, we want to smooth it again. I'm also pressing it into this wear board. Because I want to, I'm going to roll some texture on it. Um, I want to show you some other texture things that are great. I have this, I'm going to grab this doily that I have that I, I I'm going to have to do something with it next. But we'll do this next, this doily. This will be the last thing we do, though, so we'll put that to the side. All right, um, I use Debbie's cutter. Also, I have these really great cloud shape rim templates, which are similar to Debbie's. Mine are a little more circle, but uh, they're both great. So you, you can download these at claysharemarket.com. And you can take your files and you can print them out on cardstock with regular printer and cut them out, which are great. Or you can use the files and send them to your Cricut or Silhouette die cutter. Or you can take your files to somebody with a laser or CNC machine a lot of libraries and community centers and maker spaces, if you show up with your files and your material, they hardly charge you anything to make your templates. Local libraries are doing it here. It's amazing. So you can get your own templates made. Uh, another great thing is this. I got this from Bill Van Gilder years ago at a workshop he taught uh, in upstate New York. And it's made for rolling things in, like, look at that, to put texture on something. Look at that foot. Imagine that is the leg of a bowl, right? And you just roll it on. I actually think this came with two. There's a top one and a bottom one, and you lay your quail on, you roll them together. Anybody else have this? Um, but <laughs> it's great with that texture. Uh, so you can use that to make handles or feet or something. So many texture options. All right, what are we doing with this one? I got really excited. and. Um, I don't know. It's in the middle of winter. You think I'd be getting like winter blues. Maybe it's because we got so much snow and everything's so pretty and white and I just love it. So I haven't like been in the best mood the last few days. And everybody in my life has noticed. They're like, what's going on? And I'm like, what are you saying? I'm always in a good mood. But I'm extra good mood lately. All right. Uh, let's use this seven inch butterfly garden rolling pin for our texture. What do you think of that? I like it. And look, I reshaped the uh, <laughs> cutter. All right, we're going to cut it. Now we're going to line this back up. I want it to go right here. I want to see all these butterflies. You have that. It has two boards. Yes. You saw Van Gilder at a workshop. He was great. I saw him back in like 2007, 8, I think. It's been a while. Um, he's very funny. He told this really great story. And anybody who's seen him, I don't know if he still tells this story about um, him and his son didn't do dishes. Uh, and it got to the point where they had so many dirty dishes. He put them in the kiln and just fired the dishes, not all the way up, but just enough to burn off all the dirt, well, all the food, and then took them out and they were clean. So it was just a really funny story that instead of washing the dishes, he put them back in the kiln and fired him, them again. But not to glaze temp. I don't know how hot you go to burn food off, what, like 700, 800 degrees? I have no idea. 
So uh, I think I'm gonna grab my cornstarch because I think that's gonna be a little sticky. So let me, I had that out. I was doing stuff with mud, mud plug, mug plugs <laughs> earlier. So I had this over at my other workstation. But cornstarch is really great if you're using something that your clay is gonna stick to. And you put it on the object and then you can even put it on your clay just to be extra sure. Oh my gosh, look how great that looks. I can already tell once I bisque fire this and do the staining, it's gonna look amazing. I have a bunch of mugs that I did with this um, pattern that are about to go in the bisque. All right, again, we need, we need a cup, but I need something bigger. Uh, how about we're gonna use this tankard. We're gonna use this tankard as our <laughs> support. And then we'll line this up and I don't know what's gonna happen. Let's just press in at three points because we know we can do that. We'll start with three and then we'll work in on the others gently. So when we have something like this that um, is smaller than our clay, our clay has to wrap around it and conform to it somehow. So you have to be creative and you have to work the clay gently. So this, we probably would have wanted a smaller Thing, but I, we talked about this already. I'm, I'm doing what I want tonight, so we're not doing a smaller thing. So we just keep pressing it. I think we're gonna do a little release scallops. So just by pulling up a little bit in strategic places, it's almost like darting, except we're not actually cutting in we're making a scallop in the clay or a ruffle in the clay, which is gonna allow for the rest of the clay to conform. Look at what's happening there. This is gonna have a very uh, tiny bottom, a little tiny bottom. And then let's take this sponge. I'm gonna get it wet again. Oh, seven minutes. Seven minutes, I'll make one more thing. So I'm just gonna pull down. So I know this isn't what this object that I'm using was meant for, but the point is, look around your life. See what you have. What can you use to make pots with? I bet you've got a ton of things, a ton of them, just sitting there waiting for you to make something with them. All right, here's a piece of clay. I don't, I'm not gonna even worry about measuring. I'm just gonna, Cut it. That looks pretty straight to me. Uh, let's go ahead and we're gonna make a little ring foot. Line that up. So I think the most important thing for anybody is just Get in your studio, be creative, and have fun. Don't get hung up on needing certain things. It's great to have the things, but if you don't have them, it doesn't stop you. You are the important part, and it doesn't matter how long you've been making. It doesn't matter like your experience or anything, or if you've never made anything before. The important part is you want to make something. All right, so let's see. If we put that on, we need to make it a little tinier. So let's go ahead. And you notice I didn't even, I'm not measuring. I'm not measuring, I'm just cutting and checking. Let's see, we're almost there, we're almost there. I think we can take another quarter of an inch off. So what you could do now is if you know this is the size you're gonna always use for making this form, you open this up, you measure it, and you write down that information, and then you make a little template. So next time, you don't have to play the guessing game. But first time making a new form, a new shape, it's all fun, it's all play, it's all discovery. All right, so we have a form, I keep trying to dip in my cornstarch, let's switch. I mean, it's easy to see why, they're in the same container. All right, I'm gonna slip and score, but I'm gonna go pretty aggressively and I'm gonna angle down in because our bowl that we're gonna put this on is angled a bit. So you stick this on. Ooh, this is gonna be cool. Bet you didn't know. 
slip and score, slip and score, score and slip, score and slip, whatever you want to call it, it's the same. And then we'll stick this little ring I just made on it and then press down all the way around. I have to reach out uh, to mug, mud plugs and see. I bet we could find a little spot for them during Clay Share Con. The other thing is we're going to do something new this year and offer little five or ten minute spots if companies don't want to do a full demo. They can film a little something and send it in. Same thing with our members doing studio tours. All right, so I'm just pulling down like we did on the feet for the other bowl. I'm just pulling it down and blending it in. And we'll just keep going around doing that. This will take a bit of time and I want to make another piece. So just imagine I spent the next five minutes smoothing this out. For the interior, again, that quarter inch brush, that synthetic brush that I was going on about, we're just going to use that to smooth all that slip out. And then just a tiny little flare out, just a tiny one. All right, I think we could flip this off. Let's see. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Let's sit it down. Look at this. And on the overhead, go to, let's see, I moved some stuff so you can see. On camera too, look at that. That's a great little candy dish, a little bowl. And look at the presence it has. Look how it stands up. Look at this. And you could adjust these a little bit more if you want to, but isn't that great? And you know, you could put a tea light in there. You could use it as a candle holder. You could use it as a jewelry holder. All right, I've got one more thing I'm gonna make. Because one of our members met me, she came from Canada, and she went to Clayscape's Raku Day, her and her daughter, and they met us there, and she gave me this amazing doily. And I have chickens, I love chickens, and she knew that, so she gave it to me. And I've been wanting to make something with it since she did, and now I am. All right, I'm cleaning, oh, I have one clean. Here we go. I was cleaning off my rolling pin. So when you have a big slab, and you wanna roll it out, to, I need to thin it a little bit, but I also need a little more clay, because this isn't quite big enough. You just roll almost to the end, but stop. Don't roll off, because if you roll off the end, what's going to happen is you're going to thin the clay on that edge. And so you release the clay, and then you roll again. You lift up and release and roll again. And you have to lift up and release so that it will stretch. If you don't lift it up, it won't stretch. I have the coolest friends because I have you all. You all are my coolest friends. All right, let's see. Oh, this one's so good. Look at him. He's magnificent. Do we have enough? Do we, do we, do we, do we, do we? I need to stretch just a little more. Just a little more. It's like when you put those pants on after the holidays and you're like, I just need to stretch them a little more. They gotta fit. All right, let's see if we got enough now. I think we do. Let's put him in. Yeah gonna work. All right, and then just roll him in. Put him in the clay. And then for the shape, because you're probably thinking, oh, I need a giant cookie cutter. Where am I gonna get that? Don't. I'm just gonna take your knife, and the doily did the work for you. You just cut freehand around the doily. See how it has these little points? I just have to go from one point to the next. It's like connecting the dots, except I'm using my clay knife to do it. And you'll get not a perfect circle, but you know what? That's not what we're all about here. Got a little spot, little thin spot there. It's all right, we're going with it. Okay, so once we've cut it out, yeah, look at that there. I think we'll fill it in, see if we can quickly do that. Oh, I'm over. I'm over time. Hold on. We'll get this done. We got, we got to make the chicken bowl. We got to make the chicken bowl. Because in prime time, we are making Valentine. Well, for all of you procrastinators for Valentine's Day, myself included, 
Uh, we're gonna make heart pendants and gift tags. I'm gonna show you a bunch of different ways. All right, let's peel him off, look. Are you on camera? One, two, three, three. Ooh, there's his face. Oh my goodness. I love him. Okay, so what are we gonna do with him? We're gonna drape him over this bowl. Right here, this bowl mold. mold. I actually, I actually would use a different one, but all right, let's make sure the clay is released. We're gonna use this one because it's the one I grabbed. I'm gonna lay him on here. And I'm gonna shape him. He's gonna be a ruffly one too, because again, I need a bigger mold. So your clay, really, you, you, you do run into limits. All right, so we'll just make a ruffle, pull out top, bottom, pull out one side, pull out the other side. So your cardinal points, north, south, east, west. Um, might be nice to know which, where's his head? Let's see, where's your head? Okay, his head's up there. So actually it worked out really well. So we've got the cardinal points on there, north, south, east, west. And then we'll do, uh, what is that? North, northeast, south, southeast, south, southwest, uh, north, west, west. <laughs> I, may, I might be making those up at this point, we don't know. I hear Kevin laughing. All right, so we're gonna smooth this down and he's gonna sit for a few minutes because, well, he's too wet. We can't flip him out. We gotta let him sit. So um, if you want to put feet on him, you can. I think I'm gonna quickly do tiny feet. And I have this fabulous tool called a foot maker right here. Make one of these if you haven't yet. And we're gonna put feet on him. We're just gonna make three strips of clay. One, two, three little inchworms. I know I'm going over, but as long as I start my next one at 615, no pressure, uh, we'll be fine. Press them on, smooth it out. Um, I will film flipping this out because we're, it's got to sit. I'll be able to flip it out during, you know what, I won't flip it out during the next broadcast because I want to film it for those of you who are here that won't be in prime time because that's only for premium members. So be in prime time, everybody. Go sign up. We have a free trial, you know. Can't lose on free trials. And you might find it's something pretty amazing. Might be the best thing you find this year already beginning of the year you could find the best thing you're going to find that means you get the whole year of it of the best thing instead of finding us at the end of the year and being like geez i could have had clay share all year long i mean to be fair you'll you'll have us then after but all right i would say i was talking a lot and it was keeping me from working but it really doesn't as you've noticed all right so we're pressing this on here to flatten our feet and I'm gonna stamp him, boop, and then we'll let it dry. Uh, I would refine the feet and do it a little nicer, but again, time. All right, let's grab our little snoots and boots friend over here, ready? Gonna flip him out, just like that. Stand it up. This is your chance to make sure your feet work, which they do. Look at those feet. He stiffened up quite a bit. Uh, if you wanna open it up a little bit, you can, and then I will go back once it's nice and leather hard and smooth this edge out really well. But he's, he's done, he's done. So there we have it. You're all here and know why I'm late, exactly. <laughs> uh, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you'd like to know where she got the chicken doily. I know, I don't know where it came from. Isn't it, it's so, He's great. He's so great. Like, um, if she tells me, I'll share it. <laughs> all right, so we, we made four bowls tonight, uh, each one a little different, just showing you all some options out there for creating. 
Uh, mostly what I see is I, I see a lot of folks want to make something, but they feel like they can't because they don't have object A or texture B. And what I'm hoping you learn tonight is that you don't need any of those things. Look around and see what you have in your life. If you have a plastic bowl you're not using or a wooden salad bowl you're not using, or maybe you decide to use it another way, you can repurpose things, right? And you can take those out and use them in your studio. You can use lace, you can use textured rollers. Uh, I got that tool, this board. So I bet you could find things in your life that have textures. Drying mats have texture. There's so many things. Here's a cabinet, little like mat, rubbery mat that I use in the studio for a no slip pad. You could use this for texture. So it really, it's just take a look around and see what you have. Also, it's nice to introduce those things into your studio practice every once in a while so we don't get uh, stagnant, you know? We're always making the same thing, using the same stuff. Mix it up, mix things up, have some fun, get creative, challenge yourself to do something a little different outside of your norm and see what you can come up with. All right, so there we have it. That's this week's Live at Five. Next, we're gonna be making these spectacular little guys for all of you Valentine procrastinators. And if you're gonna watch the replay of it, you won't be a procrastinator, you'll be ahead of the game. We're just making little heart pendants and gift tags uh, for another day. So we're gonna make these next. We're gonna have a new class coming out, a new full length, full feature class. Full feature length class, I should say. Uh, hey, I don't know how long it is. Kevin's been editing it, so it's about an hour or so. Um, but it's, it's a bacon cooker, a wheel thrown bacon cooker, uh, hand builders, your version's coming, just wait. But that's a class I filmed months ago and we just finally finished it. So I'm excited for my wheel throwers. And also everybody else, there's a great glazing section in that class, not just for wheel throwers. If you're a hand builder, you'll want to watch the class for the glazing alone. I give you some amazing glazing tips. And that is gonna be premiering on Friday, uh, I would say noon, Eastern time. And uh, it's only for premium members. So it's not, it's not a live, it's a recorded class. So you gotta check that out. All right, everybody. I will see all y'all next Wednesday, but my premium members, I'm gonna see you in just a few minutes for our private class that we do together. So I'll see y'all then. Bye everybody. <laughs>